Well, hey guys. Happy day, happy day. How are you guys today? Today is rainy. We get some really bad weather and I am very happy that Monday is here at the farm today and that we were able to get him on Friday because the weather is just nasty. So give him a, a whole day of decent weather to kind of acclimate and get used to the things that are going on around this farm um, before it all turns to crap. <laughs> so um, speaking of crap, I happen to have some. <laughs> this is a fecal day. So this was collected fresh this morning. Uh, he is defecating perfectly. He's giving me eight to nine poops every night, which is good. You want to have about an hour to an hour and a half between poops. So he's doing great. These look really, really nice. I know, I'm sorry. Count yourself lucky. You can't smell this. So when you're looking for balls, fecal balls, you want to take a look at the texture, the color, the consistency, all of that. Now I made a video years ago about how to do a fecal sample and I'm going to do another one less in depth today. So um, you'll have to look, I think over here, they're going to put, I'll put a link to the video so you can go check that out too. But um, this might have a little bit different information on it. So um, you want to collect some samples from the beginning, the middle and the end of the defecation process. <laughs> so to speak. That way, as it moves through the intestines and goes into the bowels, you'll have something older, something newer, and kind of something sort of in the middle. So in case you've done anything like given any type of warmers or anything, it, it's stages. So, you know, like this part might be breakfast and that part might be you know, warmer, and this part might be the warmer that's actually taking effect. This particular one didn't work out that way because I get, I collected this before I gave him the warmer, which I wanted to see where we were at and then warm him appropriately. So I need to also say that before you give any type of warmer to a horse, you want to tape them for weight, or if you want, if you can go down to your veterinarian, um, they might have a scale that you can weigh your horse. Now they make, hold on. They make tapes specifically. This is one that I got a while ago and um, that one and then I have another one. So I always use both of these tapes because they're different. One goes a little bit higher than the other and the, there's different spacing between each one of them. So I, we I weighed him, weighed him today and between the two, we're gonna average it at 1500 pounds. It's very light. Heavier than Friday. Friday was 1,200 pounds when we got him. So Monday is about 1,500 pounds. And that means he's got another 300, almost 400 pounds he's got to gain. So he is very light. So with that, knowing that, we can do a fecal on him. And then we can warm him because of the appropriate weight. So that's another story. Let's get, let's get to poop, shall we? First thing that you want to do is you kind of want to mix it all up. Um, have a good plastic spoon or, um, you know, I prefer this in a plastic bag, you know, like a sandwich bag and that's easier to collect it too. So you take the sandwich bag and you turn it inside out and you can pick it all up and then turn it right side in and it's easy. And then you ziplock it and squish it all up and do all that. But since I don't have any ziplock bags, I'm just going to mix it all up, you know, chunk it up a little bit and this. This is not, you know, this is, this is not like human poop or dog poop. It's mostly grass, you know, horses don't eat anything else like honey buns or, um, you know, steak or anything. So it's less, less, um, sticky and it's pretty dry. I mean, you can see in here all the little bits and pieces of hay and grass that he's eaten. Um, if there's any, if they eat oats, their systems can't break down oats. So what you'll see is um, you'll see a couple of the oat pieces. Now these are crimped oats. They've already got a piece that's already kind of like crimped in it. 
so their tummies can break it down a little bit easier and um, but if they can't you'll see the oats in here and I don't see any oats you'll also see if they're very heavily wormed you know very wormy you might see worms in there and I don't see worms in here which is a great sign um, his fecal balls are very dry but not so dry for impaction you want to the, the scent the odor isn't really all that bad you know it I it's you get used to it <laughs> all right so this is now sufficiently mixed up really well no <laughs> that's why we use plastic spoons um, so this looks actually really super good it looks like he's really digesting his food um, it's a good color it's not dark it's not too wet um, there's no funny stuff in here like a lot of gravel or sand or anything so it looks like his diet has been fairly good for the past you know couple days which is is good um so yeah all right so all right so the next thing you want to do is now that you get it all sufficient you should have one of these things and these are they got gauges on them and you fill up your solution and then you fill up the fecal in here it's really hard to see but um i think that one's sheep and then on the other side is equine but you have some fecal solution which is just um, overly salted water. And you can see that this has got some salt here where it is undissolved, which means this is a flotation, this is a fecal solution, it's very good. So what we wanna do is try to open the jar. <laughs> got it, <laughs> well, husbands are great. <laughs> All right, so we open that and then I do have something like this just something to siphon some of this up up in you can use a pipette you can this works great because you just like it's just awesome so you want to take some of your fecal solution you want to draw it up in here and you want to put it in here up to the line where it says 26 milliliters so we're going to fill it up to here and then from here to here we're going to fill it up with the, the poop so I'm gonna draw this up in here, make sure that that's full up. Let's see. I should probably have this on like a bucket or something so you guys can see. But there you go. And then you take the solution. And we're gonna need some more. And I've been doing this for six years now. I took a class in um, Charlotte and um, one of the agricultural departments was putting it on. So I took a class on how to do this. You can imagine playing with poop for nine hours <laughs> in one day. It was really great. We had a whole class of I think like 30 people and they all brought in bags of horse poop. So can you imagine you're in a classroom environment with 30 people with two to three bags of horse manure and we're all messing with it all at the same time. You can imagine the smell. Okay, so now um, you want to make sure, oh, I'm a little short. You really want to make sure you have your, your weights and your measures right because if, if it's off, you won't have enough solution to make the um, the eggs float, and if you have too much poop, well, then it's just going to be too much. So I can see the solution in there. Okay, now we're good. You don't want to go too much. You don't want to go too late. This is the reason why there's lines all over this. All right, that's good. All right, so now we're there, and now we have to fill the rest of this up to here with our poop so you grab it and you just kind of drop it in just like that because I mean you don't really need a lot 
but you do need enough to mix it up. Come on in. There we go. Without going over. Now the day that we did this class, we used these little uh, tongue depressors, and uh, that was much easier. Oop. I don't want that one in there. That's going to be a lot of grass. Let's find another good piece. There we go. And what happens is as you're doing this, you're, you're increasing the height of your solution. Because obviously you're adding stuff to it. But you don't want to add too much. There we go. Let's turn this around. And are we on the line? Yep, I think we're we're right there on the line where we need to be. Sorry if it's blurry. Okay, so this is the fun part. Throw this one away. And then I have another one. Now, you could take this whole little blob and you could put it in a cup and stir it around. Easy enough, you could do it in here. This is what I'm using to um, dissolve his, his uh, antibiotics in. But I'm going to do it in here because I like to mix it up in here. It's just much easier for me. So you want to mix it up really good because what you're doing now is you are liquefying the fecal. Oh yeah, you don't, you don't need this anymore. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to try again. So let's, let's put the lid on that. Put that over there. Okay. So you're getting the solution and you're mixing it all up in the poop to release the eggs. So if he's, if he's got um, eggs of strongles or um, tapeworm, you know, like same stuff as what you do with a dog. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So you want to mix it up really, really, really good. And you want to squash it. You want to really get them because the eggs really stick to the poop. So you want to squash it all around. All right, I think that's pretty good. What do you think? Looks like that, uh, okay. So all my juicers or health nuts, doesn't this look super familiar? I'm gonna drink that in the morning. Yeah, okay. So now I also happen to have a tea strainer and a cup, super easy. And we are gonna strain this right in here. So we're just gonna pour all this in there. Make sure you get it all in. We're gonna let this sit for a minute. So let me uh, get all of this, scrape it all down, and put that right where it belongs. Because the more juice we got out of it, the better. All right, so. So now it's all in here. And basically what we wanna do is you wanna kinda squish all the water out. So what we have left here is at the bottom. So we're just going to strain this all out. See if I can do this without. There we go. So you want to let it go around and kind of mix it around. And you'll have a fecal ball start to form in here. So as you squish it down, you can see it dripping. You want to get this fecal ball that's in the tea strainer as dry as possible. So that way we know that we have as much eggs as we can get. And that's very, very important. So as you do that, it looks really kind of gross, huh? It's almost like green. All right. So the day was really neat. It was a veterinarian that she had done it. I think it was um, the head vet at the North Carolina Veterinary Hospital for the state. She came and, and did a whole day worth of stuff. And we got to look at everybody else's examples. And there was one horse that, oh my gosh, she had like so many eggs. And Jarvis, I brought Jarvis's and he hardly had any so it was like I need to see somebody else's because I don't know what we're seeing because I in my sample he was a very light shedder and um, he didn't have any eggs in his poop so you have um, three three types of shedding you have light shedders medium shedders and heavy shedders 
and a light shatter is under 500. Medium shatter is over 500 to 1000 and then the heavy shatters are over that. So now we have this very dry little poop ball in here and we have our hopefully eggs that are in there. So we're going to let this sit for a bit um, and allow the eggs to float. There's a fly in here. So I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes and I will be right back with you guys. All right. Well, welcome into the Christmas room. <laughs> um, here I have a McMaster's counting slide. So what this slide is, let me see if it'll, it won't go in focus. I'm not using my iPhone, so that's why. But this has grid lines on it, as you can see. Let me see if it, there. There you go. Now you can see it. So these have the little grid lines, and it's got little wedges in there. And basically what we're going to do is we are going to take a little pipette, little medical pipettes. We're going to suction up some of this stuff. We're going to and put it in here. And what happens is you'll be able to use the microscope to look through that. And then in the microscope, you want to count how many eggs are in each of these grid lines. Okay. So when you're looking at this, um, you don't count any eggs that are on the green or outside of the lines. So when we look in here, you'll only just see what's on the grid lines. So we're going to let this sit for about five to 10 minutes. And what happens is it allows the eggs to float to the top and um, any more than 30 minutes and the eggs will start to sink again. So we want them to be as much as on the top as possible. Okay. So um, we are, I'll say about after I cleaned up everything, we're about four minutes, four or five minutes, maybe a little longer. So let's, um, Put this in here and we'll put this over here and I have my trusty microscope which is amazing and let's give this a, a little stir just a little bit and we'll suck some of this up and we'll put it right in here I don't know if you guys will be able to see it but I gotta do it this way so I don't get air bubbles so that it doesn't drape out the front hold on And then we'll put some in here. There we go. There. Put that up here. Now, as you can see, I'm not going to tilt it because it'll dump it. So you can see it's all filled up and all the grid lines are all full. So let's turn on our microscope here. Put this down now you just need a 10 power microscope nothing really super fancy and i've got two little tops on this one this one is um just my the regular powered one and then i have a 21 if i really want to see something really close if something's really kind of interesting and this is on um that's 25 and this is 10. so let's uh take a look inside and see what we have let's put this in focus and then we're just going to count these as we go. There. All right. Come see this. This is really neat. All right. So take a look inside here, you guys. I want to show you. It's going to be a little difficult, so I'll try to keep it in focus as much as I can. All right. You see that? There you go. Kind of neat, huh? That's just one. I'm going to go and count all of these and uh, I will be right back and I will let you know what I found.
Okay, well, all done. What did you think? That's kind of neat, huh? So what I found was mostly the strong balls, and those are the adults. You guys caught him just in time because the, the larvae haven't hatched into the adults yet. So his load is going to be insane if he wasn't treated anytime soon. So, so. I found 14 on one side and four on the other side. So we're gonna add those up together, it's 18. And we're gonna take that number and we're gonna multiply it by 25, which is 450. Now 450 is just at the borderline of um, moderate and high shedding, because high shedding starts at 500 and the moderate is between two and, 400 and, two and 499. So what we're gonna do, now that we're armed with his weight and we know his egg count, we know if they're adults or if they're in their larva stage. So based upon all that information, we'll determine what brand that we're gonna give to him that's gonna eradicate all of these worms. Now, you can never be 100% worm free. It just, it doesn't exist, but you can get it down to a very low, moder low, uh, low shedding count and that kills most of them. Most of the worms, the strong galls, they don't live in your pasture for more than a year. So what we're going to do, I know Friday is a low shedder and same with Yoda. So we're going to get him on a regimen to kill all of these really quickly. So he's already had ivermectin and mo moxidex, mox, bleh, moxidextin. He's already had moxidextin and ivermectin. So that's done. What we're going to do is... I'm gonna give him one more real good one of uh, ivermectin to help with these um, babies. And then we're gonna let it sit for 12 days? Yeah, 10, 10 to 12 days. And then we're gonna retest him. And that will let us know whether he is resistant to any of the medications that we're giving him. And if he is, then we switch gears and we give him a dose of Quest. So that's the game plan. And we're gonna do this in 10 more days. So basically the day that we move him nose to nose is gonna be the day that we uh, retest him. We'll see what happens. So I'll just, I won't go through all of this the next time, I'll just give you guys an update. So I hope you found this interesting. And if you want any more information, I'll put a bunch of links in the description so you can do some research on your own and maybe get yourself a kit for yourself if you've got horses at home so you can do this. It's super easy. You can make this or you can buy this. This was very, very simple um, and very inexpensive on Amazon. And uh, yeah, hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.